Hi, and welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. This is Brian. Today we're going to take a look at the Ryobi Drill Press. You've probably seen this thing at Home Depot, and you wonder to yourself, is this thing any good? Will it do what I need it to do? Well, let's take a close look at it today from the perspective of a woodworker. All right, the Ryobi Drill Press. This piece of equipment comes in at just under $180. This drill press has some nice features, including a laser guided target, as well as a light for seeing things better. You can also place them both on. On the press, you can see there is a side mounted chuck for easy access. Let's take a look under the hood. As you can see, this is a belt driven drill press. There are five different speeds you can put this drill press in depending on where you put the belt. On the top of the lid, there is a guide to show you exactly what RPMs your drill press will go depending on where the belts are placed. Depending on the bit diameter from 1 16th to 1 half and the material you are drilling into, such as wood, aluminum, or iron, it will show you what levels and speeds you should be at and where the belt should be placed. So let's give this drill a test. Today we're going to go through a variety of bits, including Forstner bits as well as your standard drill bits. The diameters of these bits will range from 1 16th all the way up to 2 inches. The first bit that we're going to look at is 1 16th of an inch, so we'll need to place the belt at the top of both of the levers. Let's turn on the laser guide and the light. These tiny little bits are very hard to get directly into the center of the chuck. Once we're comfortable with the position, we'll tighten her up. As you probably can imagine, this is no challenge for this Ryobi. Now let's try a 5 16th bit. As a test for myself, I'm going to put a center hole punch right where the X meets the wood. One of my only complaints about this drill is the inaccuracy of the laser guided X. I'm sure there's a way to adjust it, but frankly I haven't looked into it yet. Although you can't see it, this drill press comes with a cast iron table. The cast iron table is adjustable by releasing this tension bolt and turning the knob on the other side of the drill press. Here's a look from the other side. You can see the teeth on the side of the drill press post that show the full maneuverability of the table. Once you're comfortable with the height, simply tighten it up by twisting the compression bolt. Now let's move on to some Forstner bits. Forstner bits are really the main thing that I would use this drill press for. Frankly, if I'm going to be using a drill bit, I'll most likely reach for my hand drill. So for me, it's very important that my drill press can handle the Forstner bits. As you can see, this drill press has no problems with a quarter inch Forstner bit. Now let's try a half inch Forstner bit. For a half inch Forstner bit, the diagram shows that the belt must be on the second tier of both of the posts. With the half inch bit, this is the first time that I'm sensing a little bit of resistance as I push the bit into the wood. Next up is a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. Now we're getting into some unknown territory. The diagram does not present any information for a 3 quarter inch bit to cut into wood. In fact, the diagram does not give any information for any bit greater than a half of an inch. I'm using my own judgment here and lowering the belt by one tier on both posts. With the 3 quarter inch bit, I'm noticing about the same amount of resistance as I did with a half inch bit. I am suspecting, however, that we're reaching the limits of this drill's capacity. Next up comes an inch and a half Forstner bit. For this I'm lowering the belt all the way to the bottom tier on both posts. 
Once again, there's no guidance for this. I'm just using my best judgment. All right, I wanted you to see and hear that. You can hear that the belt is sliding as well as the motor actually seizing. This drill is definitely not able to handle a one and a half inch drill bit. Well, for shits and gigs, let's give the two inch a run. Once again, belt sliding and motor seizing. So what are my thoughts on this drill press? Honestly, I don't use the drill press that often. And frankly, when I would use it, I'd use it for Forstner bits. This drill press doesn't really handle Forstner bits that well. So you might be better off with a handheld drill. I'll probably get a drill press that's got a little bit more power someday. Right now, I use my handheld drill for Forstner bits and regular bits, and it suits me just fine. I've been eyeballing a product by Rockler that is the portable drill press that you attach your handheld drill to. Let me know in the comments if anybody's had any experience with this drill press or any feedback related to it. Thanks again for joining me today. I appreciate your attention and I look forward to seeing you again.